Hello everyone and welcome to episode 381 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and we have the full crew here this week kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. How are you this fine Monday, Richard? Hey Seth, doing well. Uh, preview season is back. We had a, a little <laughs> break. Maybe a couple days, oh. and uh, here we are. Yeah, we <laughs> back. A couple, couple of days when did off. It ever couple leave? days off. We, Hours, I mean, we had like a minutes. solid week. I think we had we had a solid week without any spoilers. Yeah, and that's gonna be a big topic today. It's not officially Commander Legend spoiler season yet. Uh, that starts tomorrow in full. Although we did get one early spoiler, but we got a bunch of info about sets that aren't coming out for months still. Warhammer Commander decks and Double Masters and so forth. So we're gonna talk about that today. But we got another co-host. I'm getting ahead of myself. And Grim, good morning, Grim. How are you today? Good morning. Well, it's more like good night. I haven't gone to bed yet, so. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I go to bed after our morning podcast. <laughs> so, yes, I'm excited as I wind down for the day to catch up on all the things uh, magic related and all the spoilers. And, and, you know, this spoiler season specifically, I'm really hyped to talk about. So I can't wait to get into it. And I'll, I'll tell you a little bit why later. <laughs> Well, we're gonna we're gonna be talking spoilers today. We got a big list of announcement day stuff to talk about. We also had a uh, quick BNR announcement for Magic's newest format, Explore, that we're gonna mention. A bunch of promos and stuff like that, and then of course I get a, to a fish mail or two at the end of the cast. So that's the plan for today. Before we jump into it, though, a reminder that our show today is brought to you by Card Conduit, and we've been telling you about Card Conduit, a great way to sell your Magic collection, and their curated shipment service that lets you sell your valuable cards with a reduced service fee for quite a while now and as long as your cards have a retail value of at least two dollars you can send in as many as you want and still just pay a five percent service fee and as with all of card conduit services you don't gotta sort your cards you don't gotta grade your cards you get to skip over all those hassles just safely package everything up and ship it out and you'll even get a detailed report with the results so you can check out card conduit's curated shipment option it's a way to buy list cards with fast processing optimized prices and the low service fee of just five percent and right now you need to get another ten percent off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash MTG Goldfish. Card Conduit, they're the easiest way to sell your magic cards. So thanks so much to Card Conduit for supporting the show. And we got a huge list of spoilers and new sets and info. So Richard, why don't you guide us through all this stuff? All right. Uh, so we got a little preview at some of the upcoming sets. So we know Darminaria United is coming. We know Warhammer 40k Commander decks are coming. And we know Double Masters Uh is coming this summer so three sets we have a couple cards from sets and then we also have some uh new promos uh so we're gonna start with the easy one the store championship promos uh we have a flame slash and archmage's charm those are kind of the i don't even know what you call this like the the see-through back like the full art but not quite full art and then we have a textless dark confidant with new art uh, so three store promos does anyone play Dark Confidant still? Do we need this card? Yeah, yeah. I do, but not in, <laughs> but it, not, but not in the formats you think. <laughs> it, I mean, it still, it still shows up in some Jun decks. There's like, it's not what it used to be, but it still does show up a little bit in Modern and in Legacy and. I guess Commander? Like, if you search on EDH Commander. track, apparently, there are some... It must be, like, CDH-style decks that play Dark Confidant, because I never see it in in our Commander Clash playgroup, but it still sees a bit of play. I mean, the big deal is the textless promos returning. It's been a minute since we got textless promos, and I'm pretty excited to have them back. It looks really cool. Like, one thing I hate is when they take invitational cards and take the person off the art, but discounting that... I mean, the art looks really good, and it's sweet to have textless cards again. It's been too long, I think, since we had textless cards. Yeah. Uh, it, like, well, first off, I mean, before we move right on to the textless cards, I'm, I'm going to just give a big shout out to that Archmage's Charm, because I need it. It's got Teferi on Thanks there. Teferi, yep. <laughs> yeah, he's got his staff, and then Teferi in the background. He's warping some time, pissing some people off. This is the perfect spell to have Teferi on. <laughs> I love this card, and I cannot wait to get this promo. But... The one thing that bums me out about the Archmage's Charm and the Flame Slash is that it's not like Dark Confidant. I wish it were textless. <laughs> <laughs> now, I know I, I'm, I'm the sick person that did enjoy like textless Cryptic Command. 
And this could be good or bad that Dark Confidant is textless. I look at it as a positive, but when I, but when you look at it from a, a, a non-trolling kind of like, ha, 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 like I know the card, so it's funny. Let's see if you know the card kind of point of view. Texas cards are, are kind of, uh, they're kind of ambitious to bring back, right? And to put them on cards that like usually have a wall of text. Now, this may not seem bad right now because Dark Confidant, you know, if you're listening to this, you're clearly in a, like a franchise player, so you're not thinking much like, yeah, of course, you flip off the top and, you know, Dark Tutelage, right? But if you're new to the game, if you if you don't know what this does, this is going to be hard to keep track of along with Archmage's Charm. And this had me thinking like how funny this is going to be for when we go two years removed and we get Strixhaven cards that are textless. Because the closer we get to 2022 cards or 2021 cards and they're textless, I actually like imagine if they made a textless questing beast. Like, <laughs> can you can you just imagine that right now? Just try try to think about that. Uh, you you sit down across from me. I swing with a textless questing beast. What are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't. Mean, the double I don't block commanders. Oh, you're gonna love that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no one plays those, so so no harm, no follow with those, because who actually plays the Dean cycle? So, so Bob I mean, really is though, interesting. Like, Bob is so old that I think people don't know what he does. You sit okay. down, I'm like, I'm playing Boomer Jund against a Zoomer. Like, they're like, first off, what is Dark Confidant even with the text? <laughs> right? <laughs> now, without the text, they're like, what does this do? <laughs> right? Like, I think it's so old now that only old timers know. And if you played Modern the last two years, you probably wouldn't have seen a Dark Confidant. So right. I, it's a strange card to choose. And is this am- too it's, ambitious? It's complicated. Real, really, text, though. Right? No. Oh, oh, y'all, y'all are y'all are crazy. We live in a world where you can't read any magic card. You <laughs> open your booster and you get cards in different languages with unique art. So you can't even look it up by the art like all it, it's done. It doesn't matter. Like every card, like half the cards Wizards prints are essentially textless these days because they just look so different. They don't even look like magic cards. So for me, I feel like. If we're going to print a million secret layers and you can't read the text in weird fonts and all this stuff, like, is there any harm in just doing a textless card? Because in practice, what's the difference? Like, if it's a weird art that you can't see from across the table and recognize because it came from a secret layer drop or it literally has no text, is there really a difference there in terms of gameplay? Because you got to look it up either way. Two wrongs Seth, don't make are it you, right, Seth. <laughs> Two are you serious, Seth? Right? You you can't read Phyrexian? Dude. <laughs> I, I cannot. I, I, I've been learning. I've been trying oh, to learn. Oh, yeah. So, I, summer I classes. Have been, have been Seth finished, is yeah. Strixhaven Mystical Archive where you have like a single blue mana instant and you're like, what the heck is this? <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it's a Japanese. I can't read it. It's brand new art. I can't tell. And it's single blue. There are multiple spells with a single blue at instant in the set. So literally have no idea what it is. I mean, you're talking to the I, one guy that probably still tries to get the Amonkhet stuff and that's in English <laughs> quote unquote English but like l- l- I'm not gonna lie to you I have no idea what the cards say I just I, I, if uh, it's as simple as this I don't think it's too I don't think it's like you know too bad but is that because I already know what the textless cards do right like that now if I'm somebody else example like Richard had mentioned like if I haven't seen Boomer Jund, right? Like, what the hell does this dude do, right? Like, is is this Davriel? I don't understand. What is this, right? I mean, I think the card looks gorgeous. I love this card, and I play it. But but if I didn't play this normally in the last, which you, let's be honest here, if you you've played Magic, you probably haven't seen this in the last three years, four years even. I I think I think Richard is remembering it too fondly and too like, but it's actually longer than two years. Yeah. So. <sighs> So I, I, they should just put the text on the back. Like, you know, everyone uses <laughs> sleeves anyway. Like if you if you're desperate, just turn the card around and read the card. Right. Like <laughs> I, 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 I mean, love it. I think it's fine. I think it's great. I hope the, my issue is that why isn't aren't all these cards textless? <laughs> so I think I know the answer to that. And I think that part of the reason they're OK with Dark Confidant being textless is I think it's going to be like incredibly rare because these promos, they're actually given away based on your performance. So like Flame Slash is just for participating in the store championship. Arc Mage Charm, you get if you top eight the store championship. Dark Confidant, you only get if you win your store championship. So that means there's going to be 
I don't know, a couple of thousand of these in exist. I'm not even sure if it's only like premium stores that get these or how it breaks down, but I'm guessing that's what Wizards was thinking is like, okay, we don't usually do tax list, but there's not really going to be any of these cards in existence. It's more just like a vanity piece and you're not going to see them in a typical game because there's going to be so few of them out there as opposed to like a Flame Slash and Archmage Charm, which if you're giving it to everyone who plays in the store championship, there's actually going to be quite a few of those out there, I think. Oh. All right, give me give me the power rankings I, of uh, original, <laughs> the modern masters one, or uh, this new you forget, store. You forget the box the topper. You forget the oh, box topper. Which dude? was the box topper one? The one that was. Oh, uh, let's just go with racially charged <laughs> <laughs> artwork. Oh, I remember. <laughs> I remember this controversy. Okay, okay, yeah, and the box <laughs> topper one. Yes, yes. <laughs> I mean, for me, especially with invitational cards, it's always going to be the original. I think it's wrong to take the person who won the right to have their image on the card off of the card. So even though the new art looks really good, like it's it's got to be the original one with Bob Marr for me. Bob Marr, that, that, Seth, that, Seth, that that's that dates you, right? Like that dates. Right? <laughs> hey, I I will take it. I'm a proud I'm a proud boomer, I guess, when it comes to magic cards. I'm uh, I'm sorry. I I for me it was I loved the Bob Marr one, but that's because it's the first iteration, right? But then I saw the Skrillex one. I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. The Skrillex <laughs> aligns with me more likely. The racially charged one, I think, is the worst one. I actually just hate that artwork. I think it's just like bad. Uh, and then. Yeah. There's this one. This one is the coolest one. This has to be the best Dark Confidant. It looks like a Dark Confidant, right? Like, he's clearly scheming. He's doing something sketch. He's making dark deals and packs, right? He, he's he got the slick back jet black hair, you know, the, the black collar. <laughs> Dude, he looks <laughs> like Dark Confidant. He's even got the crow in the background. Come on. <laughs> this artwork is badass, right? Uh, I think Krim is right. I think this actually is the best one, but my wallet and my conscience <laughs> has to go with Seth. Like, we call the card Bob. You got to play Bob, right? Like, you have to. Well, you have who to. Calls it, okay, we call it Bob, but I guarantee you in two years, they're gonna people are going to just call it Dark Confidant again. Nobody's like, I play Dark Bob. Confidant Pass. They're like, I but- play Bob Pass. <laughs> 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 and if it, like I'm, I'm sorry. Even even if it's named Bob, uh, after Bob for a reason, this is the best art, right? We're not even talking about nickname or or the lore behind the invitation card. The, uh, just uh, like looking at the artworks, this has to be the coolest one. This ha- uh, the art's good, but it just feels so wrong. Like imagine, Krim, you win the Invitational and you get your face on a Magic card, and then a few years later they reprint it with. <laughs> racially charged art let's say like how are you gonna <laughs> how are you gonna feel about that that it went from like honoring you for like being the best at this tournament to like some controversial card with art that doesn't look anything like you i'm okay if it doesn't look like me because you know what that you're talking to the wrong person i mix and match all my artworks <laughs> so so this I is guess that's true this is the fourth bob right like this is the one i've needed <laughs> oh the answer is crim plays all <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, one of each. Look, I'm a man who enjoys the finer things in life, right? A man of culture. But, like, let's be honest. This is the most badass and the most dark, confident looking art. So I vote for this. And I didn't even know this until I looked at it right now. But I think, is that a Tarmogoyf on Flame Slash? <laughs> Ooh, maybe. Is it? Or a dinosaur? It might be a Tarmogoyf. Or is it a dinosaur? Do Can Flame Slash even kill wrong. a Tarmogoyf? That's, this, that's ambitious. Well, no, because this... It might this, be a, Is it a questing beast? It no. always kills questing beasts. It doesn't no, always no, no, kill no, a Because form. doesn't a questing beasts have hexproof? I don't know. It probably has something, right? That has to, <laughs> yeah. I don't, pull out your textless version uh, and, uh, and let me know. <laughs> I think that's a Tarmogoyf. Um, it would make sense, right? Because Flame Slash was a sorcery. And it, and it, it like... Oftentimes, that would kill a Tarmogoyf. Poor damage. Yeah, it's, it could okay. be a tar- I, I think it's a be. random dinosaur, but it could be a Tarmogoyf. I don't know. I, I'd like that to believe that Tarmogoyf to four or five is just going to bounce this off, so this is not a Tarmogoyf. <laughs> 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 All right. Speaking, speaking of promos and things that are very wrong... Uh, <laughs> We're also getting a new Soul Ring for your uh, Love Your Local Game Store promo. Spend 50 bucks to your LGS starting, I think, July 1st or June 1st, and you get this Old Border Soul Ring. But it's got the new art. How can you do an Old Border Soul Ring and put the new... Uh, that's almost as bad as the Bob thing, I think, as far as, like, disrespecting the history of the game. Like, come on now, Wazzy. Come on. to pay for the art 
uh, aren't licensed anymore, Seth. <laughs> what can they do? They they only had a record breaking financial year. You know, they they, they can't do that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think the reason why this works with the like the new art is so that it's a little bit of everything for both parties, right? You have the boomer magic. Yes, you have your old border. You have the people who mostly have started recently. You still get the new art for familiarity, but now it's the old border. So I think it's a nice mixture of both. I like it. Okay. I can I can see that. Will this get you to spend 50 bucks at your LGS? I mean, like, do you think this will actually do what it's intended to do and get people to spend money uh, at their local game stores? On sealed product? No, I don't buy I don't buy sealed. I just get unless it's the commander decks. Commander decks are almost like 50 bucks now, right? Like for pre-cons. Ooh. Yeah. Right? Like so like sure, that's like what uh, a, a pre-con in a booster pack. And that's like 50 bucks. Because it, uh, yeah, so you know what? Maybe. I mean, I'm going to spend that probably anyway, so why not get a cool soul ring to go with it? Is I Amazon might buy a box to get one. <laughs> oh, God. Only if not, you, like, not yet. mapped out boxes and <laughs> Lord knows what other <laughs> issues are going on over there. But, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, this isn't, like, this isn't going to be a main attraction for me because there's so many soul rings. Um, but, like, it doesn't hurt, right? I think, I, like, if I'm, like, at $30, I'll spend $20 more, dollars, I guess, to get the soul Ring. Sure, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we are a little soul Ring flooded. It, it, we're getting to the point where it's pretty soon, I think, it's going to be the most reprinted card because it shows up in every Commander product. So uh, the list is very long of soul Rings now, which I guess is good just for finance purposes. But, I mean, it still it looks good. The old border looks really sharp. So, And the original old border, if you're going to get like an Alpha Soul Ring or something, I'm sure, I don't even know what the price is, but I'm sure it's like ridiculously, yeah, 2500 bucks or something. So, oh, wow. Perfectly so, yeah. in the budget. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this gives people an or- old border version that isn't going to cost, you know, a, a rent payment or something. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's move on to Warhammer 40k. So they they are commander decks, and they'll be coming out. And we got three new cards, four cards, four cards. Uh, so we'll start off with uh, Abaddon the Despoiler, two blue, black, red. So five mana value in Grixis, legendary creature, Astartes Warrior. Oh, I can feel the Warhammer. I, fans I think it's. Cringing. <laughs> Is what, it what, Astartes? Astartes? I mean, I, what's this word? As, it can't be Astartes. I There's mean, that's no what way. I called it. I called it Astartes. <laughs> but, but like, I mean, I was I'm trying five. to be nice and pronounce it in a way. <laughs> but, okay. Uh, let, for the sake of this podcast, we're going to call it Astartes, and it's going to be perfect. Uh, trample. Mark of Chaos Ascendant. <laughs> During your turn, spells you cast from your hand with mana value X or less have Cascade, where X is the total amount of life your opponents have lost this turn. 5-5. Five, five. I mean... Like, Yidris? Like, yeah, this, is, this is pretty cool, right? I mean, you, you now have a... Uh, again, there's... I don't know who's over there on the design team, but they must have heard me like in one of my late night, like, you know, like my bullish shrine where I'm on my knees and I'm just praying that Grixis gets more things in Commander. Because for the longest time, we had nothing except for what we already had and then Obika, right? But that was about it. And now we're getting like, okay, I'm actually at the point where I'm running out of the lands to put in the, how many blue black X decks I have. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm running out of signets. So I'm going back to my LGS and I'm, I'm trying to find talismans and signets. So <laughs> this is good. This is a good problem to have because this means that Grixis is getting love. And it's not just any love. It's different kind of decks within Grixis. First, you just saw Evelyn, right? Or, or like, Which is a, a totally cool new way to play Grixis Vampires. I have the deck built right next to me. It's awesome. And now you get this Grixis kind of cascady, but it like has this built-in life loss, drain effect, you know, Meatball Massacre is just going to keep getting pricier, and, and yeah, like, now you're, you're, you're loving these kind of, like, Blood artist effects, these drain effects, so this is pretty cool, this is another way to build Grixis that I hadn't really thought of, because there wasn't a commander for it. I, I'm, I'm not a fan it- of Warhammer, though, I don't really know anything about Warhammer, clearly, with Astarts. <laughs> I I don't know much about Warhammer either. I do wonder, like, it's so similar to Yidris as far as, like, 
a commander that just gives all of your stuff cascade the way it uh, the way it triggers is different so there is some differences here where you care about like damaging your opponent so kind of like Rakdos thrown in there which does make it feel kind of Grixisy but Yidris is three of the four same colors so I feel like yeah but do you know what that fourth kinda, color is you Seth? Just, no Seth did you, the you color know? that makes uh your commander powerful and allows <laughs> it to <laughs> ramp into <laughs> all of its spells no 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 <laughs> Abaddon is an honest day's work okay we play Grixis we don't use green <laughs> we don't need the ramp you see that's that's big I'm just saying I just feel like it's going to look very similar to Yedris. I think I mean people love Cascade commanders it's probably going to be pretty powerful but I do feel like I like commanders that have you make you play new cards that aren't really played other places. And I feel like this one, you just like put the non green cards from your address deck into it. And you basically have the address, but without green. I don't know. What, what do you think, Richard? Yeah, it's pretty boring. I don't know. Like you see this, you got to kill them. Like they're going to cascade yep. into the zero <laughs> mana spells. And I think it's probably easier than you just like, you can just ping someone for one and then cast a one mana spell and call it a day. Um, I don't know, it's a little boring, and why does he have a sword? I thought Warhammer was the plane of guns, but okay. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. It's just Yidris with less colors. No, 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 no. <laughs> this is way di- If you think this it's is like just worse Yidris. It's like worse than Yidris. You, you, you gotta like deal like significant damage to get the full cascade off, I guess, right? No, no, no. Okay, what about... what? So you could play Yidris Pingers. That's... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cascade into your prodigal pyromancer. Got him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be sick, you know? No, like, okay, in all seriousness, I th- I think this is going to be, it's just cool to have it in Grixis, and, you know, I don't have to play green, so it's great news for me, because I, yeah. didn't, I didn't touch I mean, it's, I didn't touch Yudris because it had green, so I'm like, oh, no thank you. It's it's fine. I just wish it was maybe a little more creative, like, because it is just, like, uh, very, very similar to Yudris, but I think it'll be a, a popular you know, commander, because people love cascading into stuff. It's a lot of free value. All right. Next up, Vanguard Suppressor. Three in a blue, so four mana value, three, two. Uh, creature, Astartes Warrior, squad two. <laughs> Sorry, what has is an it, additional Richard? cost to cast a spell. You no, Richard, a say, say what it is. <laughs> say All the right. correct. <laughs> what is it? The Astartes Warrior. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <laughs> So squad two, as additional cost uh, to cast the spell, you may pay two any number of times. When this creature enters the battlefield, create that many tokens that are copies of it. Uh, flying, suppressing fire, whenever Vanguard Suppressor deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. <laughs> so this is like replicate. On a creature, no, this right? is kicker, dude. It's literally they, they like to say that every mechanic is actually kicker, and this one does <laughs> kind of yeah, replicates a good kicker. comparison, but it's it's pretty much multi kicker yeah, <laughs> that makes is... copy of cr- creatures. But the card's cool, like it's powerful, right? This seems like really a good. inherently powerful mechanic in Commander because, like, the, uh, this is a card that on turn four it's okay, like you run it out, but then in Commander you get to these late game situations. You don't really want to top deck a three two when it's you know turn eight and you got ten mana, but being able to just like dump all your mana into this and make a bunch of copies seems like it kind of makes it very flexible and powerful. Plus, it works with like Panharmonicons. It's an ETB trigger, so anything that doubles ETB works with token synergies, I think. Adrix and Nev, for example, would get even more of them. So I think the mechanic's like really strong, even if it is kind of just multi-kicker again. <laughs> I Yeah, I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't think this card's good. What? It scales. I really? It's... It- <laughs> I don't know why they make well, cards that are good when you add late, right? You have ten mana, <laughs> Krim, you rip Krim, this off. No, Krim, so many. Krim's never gonna, Krim's. never gonna squat it. Wait, when does Krim have six lands? Yeah, that, okay, I don't think okay, ever okay, <laughs> Seth. I'll be, I'll have you know, I've casted Thrax of Mundar. Okay, <laughs> that's clearly above six mana. <laughs> Second off. Okay, so for six mana, right? I would get two copies of this, right? Yes. Is that good? Six mana, two, three, two. So. Is better they than connect. a single four mana three two. Right? I mean, yes, like, correct. That's the point, right? Sure, but like, like I, I just think that okay, this card in Commander, I think would be a lot better if it were like three mana, right? Or like obviously, it'd be really good if it were two mana and then Squad two. It, it has a Toski effect on itself, right? So you just cast this and hit people, right? So. Mm-hmm. It's playable as a small creature, and then you don't want to top deck this on turn But it's not 10. a small creature. It costs, like, a big mid-range threat. And then for the scaling upwards, th- 
this is just so, oh, so you need to want to play this, right? You need to be running Astart's Tribal or Warrior <laughs> Tribal or something, right? Like you want to kind of play this, and then this card is insane. Because like imagine any of your like durly tribal creatures like scale out in the in the late game. Now, is this format warping? No, because you're still trying to cast creatures and attack, which we know Commander's not about that anymore. So yes, that's kind of weak. But if you are trying to do that, then this card's pretty good, no? This should this should That's, at least say damage to a player or planeswalker. But to be honest with you, I think this is a card where it would have just been better if it, like if it was on attack or I don't know, just three two flying, right? I Come think on. Uh, I, I think, think it's good. I think it's I think it's good. But I think I think you're right. This isn't a card I would just jam in any deck that has blue mana. But if you have synergies for it, Richard mentioned tribal synergies, or like your Yarok, or your uh, a token deck. Like if you have those type of synergies to power it up, then I think it's good enough to see play. But would I just like I'm playing a Krim Grixis deck with just like whatever stuff? Would I jam this in that? No, I don't think so. I, I don't think it's good enough to just be like a generic threat in any deck. But but even even let's say I'm playing a Yarok deck, right? Yeah, you've got to cut something. <laughs> but I mean, so in Yarok, like for six mana, you'll get three of these. For eight mana, you'll get five of these. Like it scales pretty effectively if you're double triggering, and it's the same with like Adrix and Nav or a doubling season, like those token effects. I guess, like, yeah. If you're getting twice as much for squad, then I think it's actually like pretty efficient. And then even if you get in one attack with it, that's that's a lot of card draw. Like and it does have flying, so it has some evasion. So I don't know. I, I like it in those decks. I plan on putting it into my Yarok deck. Like I, I got someone from the stream actually gave me a Yarok deck to bring to uh to Command Fest, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to throw this in it. I think if well actually it won't be. Out. Out. But once this comes out, I'm gonna throw it in it. You can proxy it. I don't care. Oh, maybe I maybe I will just to see how it plays. Because <laughs> I'm gonna spend all of my first day there trying to find an elder brain, <laughs> and then if not, I'm gonna proxy it. <laughs> all right. Next card: Blood for the Blood God. Eight black, black, red. So eleven mana value instant. This spell costs one less for each creature that died this turn. Discard your hand, then draw eight cards. Blood for the Blood God deals eight damage to each opponent. Exile it. (laughs) This card, it's so hard to evaluate. Like, do you judge this by its floor or its ceiling? Because its floor is, you're going to have games where this just gets stuck in your hand and you never cast it. But its ceiling is, someone wraths and you cast this for three mana and it's like kind of absurd. So I don't know. I don't know how to weigh this. Like, I don't know, sacrifice decks maybe where you can, I don't know, get the cost down intentionally or combo with wraths. Is this card good, though? I'm, like, super, super torn when you see a card like this where its best case is so good, but its worst case is literally a dead card. I I, I think flavor-wise, this is hilarious. I mean, it, like, it has an exclamation in the name. Like, it, like, it does. like it's, it's, you have to yell this. Like, you can't, this is like when you play Sushi Go and you just say Sushi Go lightly under your breath. No, no, no. You, the game is called Sushi Go. You have, to, it even says in the manual you have to yell it. Same with this. You have to yell this name. Playability wise, I, I think this kind of sucks. <laughs> it's it, in the best case scenario, right? Like you spend three mana to cast this. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, like <laughs> that's a wheel and twenty four damage. So that's, the best that's, case is really man. strong. That's, right? that's, that's that's good. That's good. That's good. I'll admit that part's good, but I just feel like. How often am I going to get that to happen? But then again, if anything, I should love this. But no, because I don't want to discard my hand. <laughs> That's the problem. I don't, don't want to discard this my card. Hand. <laughs> That's within your control. Yeah, but what if I want to get the value? You know, like th- there's going to be a window. I feel like there's going to be so many options, right? Where so many, so many times, right? Where I'm going to just be uh, the window where I can get the full value, sweep the board, and pay three mana. But I'll have like a grip full of cards because may- maybe it's because it's not going to go into my generic you know control decks right or or any of those decks but maybe into a sacrifice deck but like i don't know i'm just worried about the games where it's stuck in my hand and then i never cast it because seth was just roasting me about never having mana you know what i mean so like 
<laughs> oh, 11 mana is ridiculous. Like, the, the casting is naturally is really, really tough. On the other end, like, even if you, I don't know, what do you need, three, four creatures to die? And then I guess it's still, like, way <laughs> over-costed, but, like, you can <laughs> sort of cast it. <laughs> and then if you get it down to three mana, though, it's, like, legit good. So, if what you, you play think, a sack right? deck, you can get it down to three, or you can get it to a manageable cost quite easily, right? If what, you play what is Blasphemous Act and then Blood for Blood God, then that's four mana, yeah. like, Wrath the Board, Refill Your Hand, Deal 24. You're black? You have coffers? I don't know. <laughs> like, you could cast this with, a, like, off a of mana geyser. Like, there, there are ways to, like, get this explosion of mana in these colors. So maybe it's not that dead, but it is a high-risk, high-reward card. I mean, <sighs> yeah. It's it's a flavor win, know. but, like, and the artwork is awesome. But, ah, uh, I don't know. I mean, and this is just a hilarious way to, like, benefit from someone else's board wipe, I guess. But this is died, right? Yo, what if somebody plays farewell? Yeah, that that's the problem with <laughs> yeah. this, right? Like farewell, like stuffs this, or if there's like a overload rift out or something. Yeah, right? yeah. So Did, I don't know. Well, like, okay, so what is the what is the cost of this that you would think would be manageable, right? Like on average, what is your, what is your speculation? I think on average, you're probably gonna have to spend like seven mana for this. Mm, that would be four creatures dying. So again, like. This is another card I don't think I'd throw in a random deck. I think you got to have a plan to reduce the cost. So if I was playing a deck where I was normally going to have to pay seven for this, I wouldn't play it, I don't think. I think okay. I think that's too much. But if I'm playing a deck where I think I can, whatever, sack a, a grave crawler a bunch of times, or I got Prosh and a bunch of dorks that I can sacrifice to get the cost down, or I'm doing the Blasphemous Act, like Wrath Tribal, like combo stuff, then I think I would at least consider it. I'm still not 100% sold because uh, the worst case is just so bad. But in those decks, I think it's like in the conversation at least. But I don't know. I think I'd have to be getting it down to five-ish maybe before I would feel comfortable. If my average cost was five, uh, maybe that's good enough. Look, Watsy thinks this card is so good that it exiles itself. Right? <laughs> that's the only reason. They think like they put that clause in there so you can't like loop it and abuse it. So they think it's that good. So do you trust yeah. Wizards R and D? <laughs> and I think I five like, is way too much for this effect. <laughs> you I, need I, to I really get it down to three to to like use it. So yeah, you think like all, like five is still too much. Five is like you hope someone else wraths and then you cast it. <laughs> and you you happen to have five mana, right? But like if you're trying to like say. Um, damnation or something, right? And then cast this, it's like very tough, right? So you really need to get it down to three mana. Like Toxic Deluge plus this and eight creatures at six mana, like eh. So I, I don't know. It has to be pretty cheap. And and the instant thing's a little deceiving, I think, because it's hard to pass with two mana up for a counter spell a lot of times. Can you imagine trying to pass with 11 mana up or something in case, <laughs> in case you get the situation to cast this? Like... It seems very difficult to actually leave your mana up that way and, and have it work out. All right. Uh, last card they revealed was uh, Promo Fabricate. So a reprint. So we're getting... Oh. Oh, yeah. One, one, other, one other question while we're on these decks. Did you see they're doing uh, collector pre-cons for the first time? Like the a collector booster, essentially. Think of collector boosters, but entire pre-cons that are designed that way. So you're going to get only special versions of cards, I guess, with crazy art. What do you what do you think of the idea of collector pre-cons? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. <laughs> oh god. So no. it doesn't sound as bad as it sounds because like this is only being sold as pre-cons. Right? So right. if you wanted like the special art versions of some of these cards, like what would you buy them in? There's no collector boosters. So there's there, no other option. Yeah, yeah, the only logical thing to do is to make a collector <laughs> pre-con. So it makes sense if you think about it like that. But let's say like a normal commander pre-con is 50 bucks. If you consider the price of like a normal booster to a collector booster, you got to assume the collector one's going to be four or five times the cost or something. Do I, you think people are going to pay 200 bucks for like collector pre-cons of these? Is, is that an actual thing? No, way. I mean, I assume it's got to be something like that. If a normal, if a normal commander pre guns fifty, like, doesn't the collector one have to be like four times that at least? No, because like, think about the Xander split one, the secret layer, the one that Gavin built, right? That one was a hundred. That was a hundred, but there was no normal version, right? That that was the normal version, basically. 
Oh, I guess you're right. But it was all like secret layer art, though. So technically, that's true. There was, was special just art. All special arts, right? So uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, okay, if it's above $100, then, then no, nah, I'm going to just buy the singles or buy the normal cheap version. Yeah, yeah. yeah buy the normal I, cheap I feel version like, or get, uh, get singles of the decks from what I want from the decks. And maybe they're going after like Warhammer fans. Yeah, like maybe I, that's I the just market Googled is like how much it costs to play Warhammer 40K. Um, the answer is there are people out there that have it worse than us. Uh, they spend a lot of money. <laughs> so I'm going to say this collector pre-con is going to be geared towards them and it's going to cost a lot of money and it's going to be like the special one-off, like your Warhammer 40k fan. So you're going to buy the deluxe mega collector's edition, you know, drop, you know, all your money on it and that's it. Like you don't have to do this once because it's a one of. So I actually think it's going to be pretty expensive and it's actually going to be fairly popular because of Warhammer 40k fans. Oh, you know what it should be? It should be like like a coloring book, like just the lines. Because <laughs> isn't Warhammer the game where you got to paint your models? Yes. So it should be like black and white and you got to <laughs> give you a thing of paint with it and you can paint your own <laughs> your own colors in. <laughs> so yeah, that's Warhammer 40k. So they are commander decks, so remember that. So pre-cons and now we have collector pre-cons as well so we'll, we'll see how that shakes out but so far the set looks super power crept already so i'm sure it'll be uh a banger power? and then we have pe- like we have like mechs with flamethrowers already on vanguard suppressors so <laughs> get ready for your guns and magic the gathering yeah any other thoughts on warhammer no i mean i don't know the game but the cards look good so far so yeah i don't know, I don't I know anything about the game i just know that the setup takes super long so that's it. Like no, like just just to get a game started, you got to paint it, all your pieces. <laughs> like, yeah, dude, that like that's not even like like we're talking about like assuming that you've already painted your stuff and you show up with your stuff. Because I had some friends that played it, and they're like, "Yeah, we're getting set up." I'm like, "Okay, cool." So I'll just get some food really quick and come back. I was gone for thirty minutes, and I came back and they were still setting up. I'm like, "Holy crap, what's going on here?" That's just so, like magic. Like, oh, sorry, my sleeve ripped. I got to resleeve. Hold on. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. I just, I just did not know how much setup that that a game took. But yeah, no, like it does seem interesting though. I've always liked the idea of like little miniatures. So I've but always never liked the idea of anything. playing StarCraft, but with like little figures. <laughs> so I've always had an interest in this. But yeah, like who has time to paint figures and put all this together? So, uh, all right, moving on. Double Masters 2022. Cool. 2x2 is the set code. And we have a couple of reprints coming up. Uh, Liliana, The Last Hope. Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Renin 6, Weathered Wayfarer. Bring to Light. <laughs> that needed a reprint. I've been waiting for Bring to Light to get a reprint. <laughs> Does anyone play any of these cards outside of Renin 6? Do we play? Is Kozilek, 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 Kozilek sees a lot of Kozilek. play. But but that's that's like, a lot of play. That's not expensive, is it? It is. Oh, it's like seventy five bucks or something. All, yeah, They're all, all the Eldrazi are, are you, back up to like seventy five bucks. Oh, and I, yeah. I can't even begin to wonder. I want that special art so bad of Kozilek. Yeah. So they we have so we have foil etched, um, which is gonna look like the the original not the original printing, but the the main set printing with the foil etched border. And then we have borderless, and all the borderless cards have uh, new art. So there's a Ren and Six, a Kozilek, and a Liliana that we've seen so far for the borderless. The, the borderless looks really sweet. Yeah, the Kozilek one looks amazing. The Liliana art goes hard. Ren and Six kind of kind of boring actually. <laughs> uh, but oh, I like the Ren and Six. I think the, I mean, maybe it's kind of boring, but I think it looks pretty good. I, I like all the, the borderless art so far. I, what do y'all think about the cost, though? That was a big question I had. Like, obviously, there's going to be a ton of reprints. The ones we've seen so far seem decent. The thing that has mostly been a topic of conversation, though, is they released uh, the collector boosters, quote unquote, booster boxes, which are two hundred and thirty dollars <laughs> for four packs, four packs. So. I gotta say, the cost, whatever. Like, if Wizards wants to charge an ungodly amount of money for promos, go for it. That's fine, because there will hopefully be cheaper versions available. But can you really call four packs a booster box? Like, to me, that that's the part that rubs me the wrong way. Like, how in the world is four packs a booster box, Wizards? Like, I, I don't I don't get it. I don't get it. That Watsy bath. That that is like just straight up offensive. Like I I I laughed at that. I was like, four four packs is a, a box? Hello? 
and then and that's when I was like, yeah, okay. So next year we have two packs in a box, right? And then yeah. that event, and then the year after that, it's one pack and a limited land, basic land. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, dude, this is. I'm sorry. Just I don't care about the price. I don't care if you're trying to like do the the absurdly premium high end stuff. Just don't call it a box. <laughs> just like change yeah. it, change it like to to a, a collector's bundle. <laughs> Call it that, right? Well, so if they made it a box, it'd be like two thousand dollars, <laughs> like a, right? Like like at twenty four packs, it'd be like what, like eighteen hundred or something like that. So that just looks bad. So they can't do what that. Was, what was the last one? Seven hundred, eight hundred, right? For like about like well, so collector booster boxes in general are twelve packs. Oh, so that's 12, always okay. what they have been. So it's a little bit shorter. So it'd be like seven hundred for a twelve pack box or whatever. But still, like. Uh, I don't know. I'm just worried people are going to get tricked because like <laughs> I could see myself going to like some website and being like, oh, I'll pick up one of these collector booster boxes and then getting it and not realizing till it shows up that it's only four packs because it's roughly the same price as a normal collector booster box. And they've always been 12 packs. So <laughs> the listing that Wizards put up on Amazon, it does clearly say only four packs in the title. So it's not like Wizards is doing something sketchy with their listing or whatever. But I don't know. I, I'm worried people are not going to read the small print and like be expecting 12 packs and get four packs and be pretty disappointed even more awkward as if they're like you know what let's draft this box (laughs) 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 it makes sense like so i know what they're doing right because they want you when you go search uh double masters collector booster box they want you to find this right because if this didn't exist you wouldn't find it you'd be like what happened to the box and then you'll go away right so I I understand why they use the same name and try to fix at the same price point. And then because this is so ridiculously expensive, that means you get four packs. Um, I don't know how they would fix this <laughs> otherwise. Because like if you make the box like $800, who's going to buy it? If you call it something else, people may not find it. Uh, so I don't, I don't know how they would fix this. Uh, I guess that's true. Like if they just did the 12 pack box and posted their pre-sales for 750 bucks or whatever, like... I think the the Reddit thread would be just probably even more angry, honestly. Like people would be even more upset at the at just the shockingly big number. Uh, so maybe this is what they got to do it. I don't know. Just be warned, everyone. It's only four packs. Not that it's a bad deal. It's probably going to be good EV, I bet, once we get all the set and can actually look at it. Like the $100 VIP packs last time were actually good value from an EV perspective. So I think that's fine. Just like just know with this that uh, it's you're only getting four packs. So that's what you're getting for your 230 bucks or whatever. So, uh, so just know that going into it. High risk, high reward or high risk. Yeah. High reward. Right. Either your, yeah. your four packs give you nothing or your four packs give you something great such that the EV works out. So this is this is high stakes gambling here. <laughs> yeah. They have pretty it much found really it. is. It's actually just real life loot crates. So here you go. Real life loot boxes. Let's get it. However, that's cool and all, but but the one thing we're not talking about, and maybe this is just me, but have you seen the booster packs like themselves? Like what's who's on these booster packs? Oh, I saw Am- Aminatu is there, right? Yeah, Aminatu mm. is on that, and what that tells me is we're gonna get a reprint of Aminatu probably with new art, and as she's like my favorite Esper Super Friends commander, it's gonna be awesome. I'm pretty pumped on that. That's what I'm hyped on. And maybe we get more artworks with Aminatu. I'm actually hoping we get more Aminatu somewhere in the main line. Because I'd like to see more Aminatu. I thought she was a cool person. I can see like next Modern Horizons or something. Maybe it could even be a standard set. But I I wouldn't be surprised if we've seen more eventually. Although Aminatu is only like seven bucks. One thing I get disappointed about with these super expensive sets is when they have low end mythics in them. And I guess every set's got to have some duds, but that would be my only argument against Aminatu is I don't really want to open a $55 pack or whatever and have that be my, be my mythic. Like that would be a little <laughs> maybe, sad. Maybe. Same with bring to light, bring to light's like a buck. Like ugh, even that it's like, I don't want to see Seth, that. I don't know what lot. you're talking about, Seth. Okay. <laughs> bring to light has been a needed reprint. It is just so overpriced right now. What is it like 59 cents? <laughs> That card, that card is so overpriced right now, so it needed that reprint. <laughs> and second off, I would rather open Aminatu than Comet Storm for the 50th time, so. <laughs> I don't like okay, Aminatu because okay, it signals Commander products in this product, right? Like, 
so far, the cards we've seen are all like 60 card staples or theoretically playable in 60 cards. Amanatsu is like purely a commander card, right? The ultimate is like commander related. Or right. can you actually use Not that even ultimate? legal. Not even legal in modern. Yeah, okay. It's not even legal. Anything except, yeah. Yeah, so like we have commander legends like literally coming around here. We've had like a million commander products. Like do we need to throw more commander staples into this master set? So that's the part I'm worried about that there's going to be a lot of commander cards. Like I don't want to see, you know, unplayable eight drops in <laughs> in legacy or something, right? Like give me give me the hard hitting modern cards and the the vintage. Like this is the one set where they can print them. So hopefully it doesn't get squeezed out by commander. Do you think Monkey gets yeah. a reprint? Uh, that's that's actually my big concern is like a lot of what's making modern so expensive is modern horizons too with cards like well, the elementals and ragamon or whatever and i don't think so like the, traditionally it takes wizards two or three years to get around to reprinting stuff so i'm skeptical we're gonna see any modern horizons 2 stuff and that means it's not gonna reprint the most important stuff for making modern cheaper so that's maybe they do maybe this will be different but i'm scared we're not gonna see any of the modern horizons 2 stuff and that means modern's still going to be really expensive because of those cards. I mean, wh- okay, so assuming we remove Modern Horizons 2, I mean, Force of Negation has to be on this, right? Yeah, Force of Negation. Are- I think Modern Horizon 1 stuff, we already saw Ren, so we saw Ren in 6. Uh, yeah, we well, know we're getting the Archmage's Charm, so I think yeah. the first Modern Horizons is definitely on the on the reprinting block. I expect we'll see a lot of those reprinted. There's not a lot that what do you got? Urza, Season Pyromancer are pretty expensive. I guess Yagmas up to fifty bucks now. So I guess actually a lot of Modern Horizons one stuff is is pretty pricey. So they all help to some extent, but none of those cards, I guess Force Negation kinda does, but like Urza or Yagmoth, they're not really monkeys or like solitudes or cards that you see playing every deck. They most mostly show up in one deck. So I don't know if those are the cards that are like really driving up the cost of the format. So It'll help, though, like, to some extent. Yeah. We just like, need Modern Horizons 3, Seth, to power creep out the monkey and <laughs> lower its we, cost. We, we need Modern Horizons 2 Masters, <laughs> I think. We need, we need a Master set that's literally just Modern Horizons. <laughs> but no, we call it, we call it, what was it, the Innistrad Double Featured or whatever, where they just reprint uh, cards yeah, they printed yeah. literally, uh, like, last month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That that actually is kind of what we need. What's, what's, what's the history feedback? Sentinel? Monkey added to the list done <laughs> Esper sentinel was modern horizons too oh is it too okay uh yeah. I, I don't remember anymore but yeah like I, I mean i'm pretty sure stoneforge has to be in this stoneforge mystic's got to be in this there's just no yeah, way that not. that seems likely yeah because like a place that's like almost pushing 200 or something now uh and I, I assume we'll probably see snapcaster again and all the fetches right like all the suspects that you would assume i think the biggest thing is yeah like not having horizons too <laughs> So, any other thoughts on the spoiler stuff before we uh, hit up one other topic? We actually, we actually got a BNR announcement this week. Actually, let's let's talk BNR because I think Wizards listened to our last podcast, Grim. Yeah. This is something <laughs> yeah, you specifically yeah. have been talking about a lot, but we've both been talking about Wizards announced bannings in Explorer already, just out of the blue. Like we're banning these cards. Winota gone. Tybalt's trickery gone uh, with the asterisk that Winota, it's kind of almost suspended. Wizards made it pretty clear like their goal is to unban it as quickly as possible once the format can handle it. Whether that be once we get full Pioneer, then it'll definitely be unbanned, but maybe even earlier as we get more cards in the format and more decks in the format. What do y'all think of uh, of these changes? Well, okay. First off, thank you, Wizards. Thank you very much. <laughs> That, that was a much needed, uh, suspension. I'm sorry. I know that this is, uh, gonna sound weird though, but what if we did make this like a real thing? So this was banned in Pioneer. How about that? That'd be cool, <laughs> right? That'd be great. So I think this banning in Explorer was, was awesome. I know. And, and again, tons of people, like I tweeted it out and like, you know, like everybody, the, the first thing I got was, but you could kill, um, uh, you could kill, uh, Winota. Yes. As a matter of fact, I actually have a winning win percentage <laughs> against Winota. <laughs> that isn't, that, but that doesn't mean anything because it's not the fact that it's unbeatable. You can beat the card. You can kill the card, but the way that it warps your deck building and the, the format itself around preparing for it, that's the play patterns that Winota is. People are like, Oh, just remove Winota. Yes. And then what lose to Seekus Chariot, you know, 
all the mana dorks going into Tolivars, right? Like all, all this other stuff. It's not like like we had talked about it last podcast. They can still play a fair mid range game. And the scary thing about it is that every single non like, you know, human threat is an Avengers level threat because at any point it becomes something worse, right? So you tap out, they play Winota. You look like you don't have any removal, they play Winota. But until then, they chip at you and they do all this other stuff. And if you're like an aggro deck or anything like anything else, you're just not faster. Like they are just going to be better than you. So it's a little bit awkward. So yeah, if you're playing a control deck, you could probably deal with it. But let's say you're not playing a control deck. Then you have to, like, how does a mid-range deck beat that, right? Because then it's like, okay, I'm now heavily loaded on removal and not that many threats, or my aggro deck slows down significantly, so it doesn't matter. I can't go underneath them. I, I don't know. I think it, it's... It, I'm happy it's gone. I hope Pioneer follows suit. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm glad to see it banned as well. I think Winota is just... It's not a super healthy play pattern, and I would be fine with it being banned in Pioneer. I don't have as strong of feelings about it as I did in Explorer with the smaller card pool, but I do think if they did ban it in Pioneer, I would be I would be perfectly fine with that because it's right on the edge, I think, of what's healthy for the format. I actually think the Tibalt's Trickery banning is maybe the more problematic one long-term because remember long-term, the idea is that Pioneer is going to be Pioneer on Arena. Like sooner or later, it literally will be Pioneer what do you do about Tibalt's Trickery then? Like, I almost think Tibalt's Trickery has to be banned in Pioneer by the time Pioneer comes to Arena, because the problem with Trickery isn't that it's too good, it's that Arena's incentive system is, like, so messed up that it makes people play decks that win or lose super quickly to try, try to hit their dailies. So once we get full Pioneer, best of one people are still going to play that deck because it's still going to be the fastest way to win or lose, like, and hit your daily rewards. So I think they almost have to ban Trickery in full Pioneer, which I guess would be okay because no one plays Trickery in full Pioneer. It's just, like, not a thing that people do. But it is, uh, to both Trickery is a problem that just keeps happening because the problem isn't Trickery. It's how Arena's reward system is set up. So I don't know if there's any any real solution to it otherwise, right? Like, won't this just happen again once we have full Pioneer and Trickery is unbanned? Won't people just go back to doing that to hit their rewards? I mean, when you think about it, it's not... Well, (sighs) they have to actually be winning with this, right? Otherwise, like, you would just stuff them and laugh your way to a free win. (laughs) It's good in (sighs) best of one, right? Like, that's the thing. In best of one, it is good. Okay, but like, it's still good in best of one. Yeah, I I think it is genuinely, like, a... More often than not, E, like, even if it's kind of random, like having a turn to Ugin is pretty damn good, right? Like, <laughs> you don't <say laughs> like, well, yeah. So, I, but I mean, I think the thing here is for real pioneer, it is best of one. So, if we're worried about being real pioneer, right? And according to a lot of people, best of one isn't real magic. So, because of that, then why not just leave it banned in best of one and then just have best of three be whatever pioneer is? That might that might be what they need to do is split the ban list by best of one or best of three. Because I think the issue is like if you really think about the math on it, like if you win twenty percent, twenty five percent of the time, let's say, and your matches take two minutes because you're playing trickery, that means you're getting a win what once every eight minutes. And then you play another deck that it takes five minutes to play a match, and you win fifty percent of the time. You double your win rate. It takes you 10 minutes to win a match. So it's actually less efficient, even though you're winning twice as much to hit your daily rewards. That's the, in my opinion, the problem with trickery is like, is just that incentive system. Like you have a really low win rate, but if all your games are ending on turn two in one direction or another, that's still going to be faster to hit your daily wins than playing a real deck that actually takes, has to play a real game of magic and takes a few minutes to do it. So yeah, I think maybe splitting best of one and best of three ban lists is really the only the only path forward long term yeah right like it, it makes sense i mean it treat it like a different format right and i and i would too so best of one format is different from best of three so have a different set list for that and i think that's just something you'll have to understand when you're you know playing best of one have they split the historic ban list they haven't right the only example I can think of of it being split was Nexus, Nexus and Standard, right? Yeah. They they ban it only in best of one standard for a while. But yeah, I don't think they've split the ban list in any other format. Yeah. I mean they definitely will need to split it. Like they can't pretend it's the same. Like imagine modern with no sideboards. Like it's a totally different format, <laughs> right? Like the more powerful 
uh, your format is, the more powerful your sideboard cards are. And that's what, like, you know, contributes to the metagame. So if you just take away that aspect, it's got to be totally different. So they will have to split it sooner or later. And best of one will be more popular than best of three. So if they don't split it, you're going to all play with the best of one, uh, you know, BNR, right? So I think they, they definitely have to split it. I mean, because they're they're going to have to they're going to have to do something about Lotus Field, I think. Just oh, yeah. Ascendancy. Like if you look at actual Pioneer, those decks wreck facing game one. Like that's the whole reason to play them. It's almost like dredge how like, you know, you're going to get a free win most of the time in game one. And then you can fight through the eight sideboard cards your opponent brings in and hopefully win one of the second two games. Because if you look at Pioneer decks, they're overloaded with like six to eight cards specifically for those combo decks. In best of one, aren't those decks just going to roll everyone? Like, if you don't have access to a ton of sideboard cards to bring in, I assume that those decks are just going to be very close to unbeatable, really. Yeah. So hopefully they split it. I think I think that is the, the correct thing to do. Because I would hate to see, like, Paper Pioneer, which is getting Pro Tours and so forth, have decks that are okay in the format banned because of best of one on Arena. I think that's also, like, an awkward solution. So... I don't know. Split the ban, Liz. I guess it's not pressing to do it immediately because we still need, you know, some time to get full Pioneer. But I think eventually that's got to be the the right direction. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's uh, all of our topics, but we got a couple minutes. So, Richard, maybe you should uh, give us a couple fish mail. All right. If you have questions, send them to at MTGoldfish with the hashtag MTGFishmail. And we'll get to your questions on air. MTG Borden, people always complain about combo, like Lotus Field and Pioneer. <laughs> As a Johnny <laughs> combo myself, it always feels like people want to ban every playable combo deck. What do you think an ideal combo deck looks like in a balanced format? Um, I think a ba- a good a good look at what like a balanced combo could be is uh what's that deck? The one that uses Paradise Druid. I think that's a totally fine combo deck. The one that uh uses oh. Neoform, Paradise Druid, tries oh, to go... The, the Neoform combo where you're trying to tutor out, like, copy Neoform and tutor yeah, out your yeah. features, that one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty fair, I guess, because you have a... There's a very high deck building cost in a deck like that, because you have to have so many of your slots dedicated to combo pieces to tutor out. Yeah. So I guess I could see that. I don't know. I can't really think of too many fair combo decks. Like, <laughs> kind of the definition of unfair Splinter is. Twin. Yeah. Uh, but like, then here's those twin, are often. Right? The... It's, it's a turn four or five win. So it's slow enough that like an aggro deck with a strong enough start can actually plow through and win. And it's also interactable with creature removal. So like most decks can interact with it or at least try to interact with it. So I actually think Splinter Twin is kind of the the perfect combo because if you get too fast, like if you combo off on turn two, if you're not playing stack interaction, you you have like no luck, right? You you can't aggro them out fast enough and then you can't uh, interact with the combo either. So that's the feel bad scenario, right? And then if the combo is too slow, like turn eight, then it's like a useless combo, mm-hmm. right? So I think your combo has to go off around like turn four, uh, not be accelerated into. So, you know, the decks that use mana dorks to accelerate into their combo, cheat that. And then be creature based. So normal removal can kind of disrupt it. I think the creature removal is actually a a really big one. I think that's right. Because I think that's where a lot of the frustration comes in with Lotus Field combo or whatever is you have these people who are playing a a fair deck and they're playing the stuff to deal with fair decks. And then they play against Lotus Field and it feels like your opponent's playing a, a different game. Same with like Storm or Dredge or something like that, where your opponent's just they're playing the game on such a different level that all your cards aren't going to interact with it the way that you intended to. And then people end up getting frustrated by that. So I think when a combo does get beat by creature removal that does solve that part of the the problem at least so i think i think that's a good uh, very good answer next question salty hummus boy i love the idea of explorer and want to play it but arena is just too expensive is there literally anything we can do as magic players to make watsi change i feel fed up and apathetic and it's just depressing considering how good this game is i mean no <laughs> i mean i guess the real answer is probably if a lot of people stop playing and it hit Watsi's uh, bottom line, maybe that would lead to changes. But apart from that, like, no. And I don't even know if that's realistic because people have always suggested, oh, what if we do like a boycott and everyone stops playing? But I don't actually think it's possible to get such a large percentage of the community on board with not playing that, uh, that you get enough people to do it where it would actually hit Watsi's bottom line. So Honestly, I don't know. Am I missing something? Is there something we can do? Because I kind of feel like there isn't. 
play another game. <laughs> like, I, I think the worst yeah. thing you can do is actually log in every day and do your dailies in hoping of storing up enough money to get somewhere. Like, I think Wiz- Wizards is like, oh, this is working exactly as intended, right? This person is engaged every day and they are, you know, playing and, you know, getting gold and buying cards. So I wouldn't do that. I would actually just play like League of Legends or something, Runeterra. Like, you can play another card game that, you know, maybe depending on your opinion, is 90% as good as Magic or maybe 110% as good as Magic, right? That are have much more favorable economies. Or you could just play like Fortnite or You know what I mean? Like there are plenty of other games you can play that are really good games that are completely free, right? Like you don't need to slave away and play this game that's like super expensive, right? Or the other option is you can just play Paper Magic. You can play Proxied Pioneer or you can play... You know, invest in a pioneer deck and just play at your LGS. So there, like, there are other ways to do it. I wouldn't grind away at Arena and hope it gets better one day because I don't, I don't know that it will. Especially if you kind of make these compromises, right? I think it will happen when everyone quits and then does something else, and then Watsi will be like, "Hey, maybe it is too expensive. We got to do something about it." So that's my opinion. I mean, yeah. Uh, until you're actually able to affect their sales, I I don't really know, <laughs> right? Like, what can? Yeah, I just don't know what you would do. Last question, solid gold toilet. I felt that wizards, I feel that wizards will be burnt out with product releases. So I propose the year of reprint. Core set, full of chase reprint, spring set, original Innistrad, fall, original Ravnica, commander, the top 10 decks of all time in two sets of five. What? I actually think it would be really <laughs> interesting to see an old set reprinted just fully into standard. I, I've always thought that would be interesting. I don't know if wizards would actually do it, but... It would be really cool just to see how it played or even just like reprint old sets. I've always wanted them to like, OK, Zendikar boxes, we're going to re-release them, put the mystery booster or whatever stamp on them if you have to, to let them, people know it's not literally the first printing and just like sell them for 100 bucks. I think a lot of people would buy those for those old boxes. You could get a box to draft again or whatever. So I think there's definitely stuff that wizards could explore along those lines. It would be really cool whether or not they actually do it. I don't know. They seem to be making a lot of money printing tons and tons of new products. So I assume they're going to keep heading down that path until they stop making that much money doing what they're doing now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> with the interest 2.0 here, maybe they have run out of ideas, right? <laughs> like, the cards are looking very similar now. So maybe reprints are fine or maybe maybe it's just a year of secret lair, right? It's like maybe not reprints, but like the year of like special promo versions and you know, universes beyond crossovers and whatnot. So they're not necessarily new cards, but they're like new takes on cards and new IP and things like that. But I mean, I'm, I'm burnt out. It's already Boulder's Gate season. And like, I still haven't even played any uh, of the commander cards from the last set, right? I'm still working through the main set still. So I don't know who can keep up with this. <laughs> I, they are moving so fast that I'm also just like, oh, right. Boulder's Gate isn't even out yet. Hold on. <laughs> One second. <laughs> All right. So thank you to everyone who sent in questions. If you have future questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail. And we got two questions on air. And I believe that brings us to the end of episode 381 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So Richard Krim, thanks for hanging out. Thanks to everyone for listening. Thanks to Card Conduit for supporting the show. And we will be back next week to talk about Commander Legend 2 spoilers and whatever else goes on in the world of magic. So until then, have a great week, everyone. And this is the crew signing out.